there is nothing worse than untapped potential. If you know that you're made for more, this is the place. I know that every successful person I've ever met has one thing in common. They do not let themselves fall victim to their circumstances. They figure out a way to rise above it. So join me on this journey where I help you to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business. If you're feeling stuck and you're needing some practical tools, some hope to get you to that better life, this is definitely the place for you. Hey everybody, welcome to the Upsec Podcast. And today I get a chance to have a conversation with my new friend, Janet Soriano. And girlfriend, you are somebody that I just couldn't wait to talk about um, the, the thing that you're passionate about. You are considered a website designer and business coach. Does that sound accurate? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So you are going to do such a better job of talking about all the things that you do and the way that you show up in the world and help people than I can ever give you credit for um, myself. So why don't you go ahead and share with all of us what you're doing in this world to make the impact that you are and how you're helping people. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity um, to be in this podcast. Um, my name is Janet Soriano, uh, like you said, and I am a web designer and business coach. I help entrepreneurs, uh, specifically women, um, showcase themselves as credible experts and be, um, be more confident in their business so they can be able to grow their business and change their quality of life. Um, that's what I'm all about. And I have been doing this for a few years now, about seven years. Um, and I just love what I do. Okay. So I have to know, like, how did you become so passionate about this particular way that you're showing up in the world? Okay. So I didn't start out this way. Um, I started off, um, I read a book. I was inspired by a book to start my entrepreneurship journey. Um, is this book is called Girl Boss by Sofia Maruso. If you ever oh. heard about her, she is a person who started selling eBay clothes um, and then okay. become a multimillionaire um, by selling eBay vintage clothes. Um, so so I, I just really ask you, I'm just going to ask you real quick because I'm just fascinated. So, what made you pick up? If you were not an entrepreneur, what mm. made you pick up that book, Girl Boss? Oh, okay. Place. So that was a uh, summer I spent with an aunt that I had uh -huh. and she loved to read. I loved to read before, but never yeah. picked yeah. up an entrepreneurship book. Um, yes. All her books were like novels and stuff like that. So um, she really, um, we had a deep conversation on a beach one day and she told me, look, you need to start reading books of growth. Books are going to, you know, I was like 19. So she was, you yeah. know, putting me on to things that she knew um, and, you know, self-help books um, and stuff. So she recommended me that book um, and that's how I stumbled upon it. And I that's started. That's amazing. It's so my, I just, I wanted to ask that book. question because it's, it's so important that we consider the fact that your aunt did not realize that she was about to change your life and yes. you changed <laughs> other people's lives. So that little tiny moment was the catalyst for all these things. And I think that I wanted to, to ask that question because I think that so oftentimes we forget the way that we show up in the world, even if we feel like it's insignificant, it might be significant for someone else. And so remembering that we have moments all the time where we're impacting other people. The other thing that I wanted to point out too, is that sometimes people will say like, oh, well, you know, if you write a book, like, you know, how many people are really going to read it? And what if it's not a bestseller? and I'm not going to make any money doing it anyway and all the things and just reminding everybody too that a book changed <laughs> the trajectory of your life. And so if you are thinking about writing that book, girlfriend, write the book because yeah. <laughs> somebody like Janet, somebody like myself might be reading that book someday and you completely change your life. So, okay. So girl boss, it was all about this woman who um, was selling clothes on eBay and sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just had to, I had to ask. Yeah, so she became a multimillionaire, and I got inspired by that. I was like, "Oh, I want, I want to make money like that." Yeah. <laughs> so I just got inspired, started going on YouTube, learning about the online space. I did yeah. not know nothing about websites. I did not know nothing about, you know, um, marketing. None of that. So I um, just started the journey of learning, 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 um, and I got myself into my first 
program, which was B school at the time. That was actually my second investment. Uh, but wait, let me backtrack a little bit back. <laughs> um, I started that business of clothing. So I started selling oh, little okay. cute clothing because of course I got inspired by that. Yeah. But then I, um, um, I was learning a lot. There was more to it. So I found out that there was, um, you know, SEO that you had to do with that website. Um, you know, um, the banner and how do I put the logo? How do I create the logo? So I, I got myself into all that, you know, the, all the little details of creating a website. Yeah. And I got myself so, it, it was so creative for me to even, you know, just figure it out. Yeah. Um, and I just kept learning and learning. Um, I, I then figure out that supposedly I needed SEO, right. To rank up on Google and, um, so forth. Um, and then I got into my first investment. I, this is something I really do want to share because, um, it really, um, changed how I started, um, viewing entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, I made this first investment because I supposedly, um, you know, I heard a lot of like, I need SEO to make sure that I rank up on Google and I get more traffic into, um, my website and, you know, eventually grow my business. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got sold by an agency, a marketing agency that they would do the SEO for me, right. Mm -hmm. That they would help me rank up in Google and that they promised all these great things that would happen once I had the SEO thing yeah. figured yeah. out. Um, and I remember though it wasn't much money. It was like $700 that I paid for that service. Um, and then they gave me some keywords and then just told me to go on my way. And I was like, what? I was <laughs> so um, like disappointed. Yes, under promise or over promise under delivered, right? Yes. Ugh. And I felt like I got ripped off of my money. Mm -hmm. I felt um, really um, in a place that I felt like I couldn't move forward. Mm -hmm. I felt kind of like stuck. That was like the first, after I started my entrepreneurship, that was yeah. the first um, block that I felt that um, I didn't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how I was going to, you know, make this million dollar empire that I wanted yeah. um, happen. I didn't know how I wanted to, you know, um, I knew I wanted to do more. I wanted to impact people, but I just didn't have the guidance yet. And right. I was feeling, um, I was feeling really stuck because I was like, oh my God, they took my money. And I, and now I, <laughs> that was the little money that I had. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not making any money, um, off my, off my, of this business. Um, it was like my very first investment and it went and it, and it felt like the whole world just turned its back on me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, yeah. And, and that just felt like a place where I couldn't get out of for a few uh, months. Mm -hmm. So what happened was, is that I kept on reading, right? I kept on reading. I kept on learning. I didn't stop from my learning, my learning. Right. And, um, I got into this new program that was out there was Marie Forleo B school. I'm pretty sure. Um, it's pretty famous out there. Um, and that's where I really started, you know, honing more, like owning more of what I really wanted to do and actually focus, um, uh, my business instead of just making money to actually having a purpose impacting people. Yeah. And um, one thing I want, in, mm -hmm. okay, no, keep going. One thing that turned into two, I'm sorry, keep going. So, uh, so that uh, being able to just keep learning, keep learning yeah. and, um, understand that even though I had a setback, um, it didn't, it, I didn't stop. I didn't, you know, just quit. I yeah. didn't turn things around it. Things really shifted for me. Um, after that thing, because I started, you know, making smarter investments. So instead of, you know, thinking that I would pay someone to do the work for me, mm -hmm. I knew that I am paying someone to help me and guide me to get the work done myself. Mm -hmm. Right. So that yeah. was like a real turning point for me.
That is amazing. Okay. So there's a couple of things that I want to unpack really quickly because I just love your story so much. So one of the things that you mentioned when you felt stuck, you had gotten taken advantage of by this company that was going to do all of this for you is that it felt like the world was kind of all against you at the moment. And so it's so easy for us, you guys, to hit our first roadblock and, and really make it into this gigantic problem instead of the little thing, the little, the little bump in the road that it is. And I love the fact that you shared that it did. It took you out for a couple months. And I, I got stuck myself last, last summer. I was in a headspace that I was, I was completely stuck. And I think that it's good for us to, to share those moments with one another because we think that we watch other people from their journey on, you know, Instagram and it all looks so perfect and so easy that we don't necessarily realize that the people that are really successful around us can have this, you know, thing happen to them too. And so it, it makes you so much relatable. But then the decision was that you decided to to do what you could to, to get yourself unstuck. And that's the thing that successful people do, right? We we have moments of being stuck, but we choose to get unstuck, right? Yeah. And the other thing too that I think was really cool, because you might be um, talking to somebody out there who, you know, wants better for their life, but doesn't even know where to start. And and I love that you are a perfect example of something very simple that I've noticed this three-step process that makes people successful. And the first step is really just to have the desire. You read a book that gave you this little desire inside your heart that, oh my goodness, like I could have better. I could have better than what I ever imagined for myself. So you have a desire for a better life, a different life, right? So that it has to start with the desire. If you don't have a desire for better, you're definitely not going to do the other things that are going to be necessary to be successful, right? And then the second thing that I've noticed that um, people have to do is make the decision. I'm deciding to make this happen. And you did. You went on YouTube. You went on Google. You figured it out. You didn't tell yourself, yeah, well, that's a life for somebody else. Like, no, like you utilize the resources that you had to make it work. And then the third thing is to do it. So you can make the decision all you want, but you have to actually execute. And that's what you did. And I love how it your business now looks different than the clothing business that you started. Yeah. <laughs> but it got you into action. So the desire got you into action. You decided to do the things that you needed to do to learn and you did them. And as you decided and as you learned, all of a sudden it grew into this other business that you have because you started to recognize that you have these gifts and talents that you needed during your own entrepreneurial journey. And now you're offering that to other people. And so how beautiful is that story? Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. So, so okay. So you, you decided to... Um, learn. So you devoted then to just figuring this out instead of relying on other people to do it for you. And you decided to start learning it yourself. Okay. So, so then take us down the next, the next leg of your journey. Okay. So, um, it's been a roller coaster. Like I, I always tell my clients, um, entrepreneurship is like a roller coaster. There's ups and downs, there's turns, there's, you know, the, the swings, there's little water spraying at you. Um, and yeah. then there's that moment <laughs> of, you know, when, uh, I think almost every, every roller coaster in Six Flags has um, that little camera that captures yes. that moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah! <laughs> hey, that camera. So my son is 12. I, I mortify him, but my goal is to get next to him on all of the roller coasters. And when I know the camera's coming, I lean in for a kiss and he gets so embarrassed. <laughs> But it's like this funny little joke because I know he really actually secretly likes it because he'll be like, mom, you're not going to sit next to me, are you? <laughs> and then he kind of has this little smirk. So anyway, that that's brought back a good memory for me. But yeah, yeah. so that camera, so the camera, you're on, you're on the roller coaster, the camera is there, it takes a shot of you. And you just look at the moment where you um, were scared. Uh, where yeah. you were not scared, but at the moment that the picture is going, yeah. you are really, really scared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In that moment, right? Sometimes yeah. the picture can look like you um, are happy and good, right? On the yeah. outside. Yeah. But in reality, you're going down that roller coaster. Yes. You're scared for your yes. life. Yes. <laughs> because at that moment, you, ha don't, you don't have any control of what's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Right. So, and, and, 
I was just going to say that, like, what a difference when it's the first time you go down that roller coaster and how terrified you are and the look on your face. And then you go down 30 times, right? And then you're smiling and kissing your son. And so going to show, right, that it's going to be hard, especially when you're starting off. It's going to be scary. Yeah. And yeah. the longer that you're in it, right, the more you're going to just start to enjoy the ride. And it's not going to be quite so scary. So, yes. Yeah, so so you you gave that beautiful analogy. So sometimes it's it's scary. Yeah. So it's been like that. It's been where where it's moments where um, I don't know. Um, you know, you, you don't really know when or yeah. where the next client is going to come from. Right. Um, and in those moments, there's a lot of there's a lot of decisions that you have to make as an entrepreneurship, as an as a owner of your business, you have to right. like really work on that mindset to really stay the course and really understand that you're in business for the long term. You're not in business just for you know that small ride. You're in business for yeah. you know a long ride. So there yeah. is going to be ups and downs. Um, it's just a matter of like, what's your state when you're writing the course, right? What's your state um, when you're um, figuring things out that you still don't know how to figure out? How you don't know, you still don't know how to put yourself out there. You're still scared and stuck because you have some beliefs that are not, that came from when you were little. Right. And you still don't know how to figure those beliefs out to change them around and make those shifts, right? Um, so there's a lot of things that can hold us back um, it's just understanding that we can do it, right? We can do it because we can, because we can find the resources, because we're humans and we have this incredible creative ability to just figure things out, right? Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that, Janet, as you talk, it just, I had this aha moment of, of recognizing that there's so many people that go into business, right? They have an idea. They have a desire, right? And then they get into it and they're like, holy crap, this is way harder than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And it's so much easier just to be like, you know what, maybe this isn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember, you know, where I read this. Um, and I don't know how long ago, so forgive me for that. But I want to say it's like 95% of small businesses fail after the first five years, something like that. And it's because we, it gets hard, right? It is. And I love the fact that your, you said that your, your program that you went through gave you this idea of taking your business from making money to making an impact. And so now what you're doing is you're walking alongside people and you're helping them overcome some of these barriers. You're walking alongside them as their guide to yeah. give them the encouragement, to give them the belief, to give them the technical know-how that it takes to be successful because you've been there. Yeah. And because of you, somebody doesn't quit. Yeah. And because of you, somebody idea that was planted on their heart comes to fruition and somebody else's life was impacted because of that. Like yeah. how amazing, how, what a beautiful purpose that you have in this life. I would say, um, there, I think it's bigger than that. Just, um, I'm still in the midst of figuring it, figuring that out. Um, yeah. But one of the things that I can really, really um, say that I have like in my own journey of doing this is um, the confidence that it has given me to um, to just keep going even when the results are not showing up. So there's mm -hmm. moments where you're doing the work and you're putting yourself out there and you're doing the visibility and the clients still are not coming in in that mm -hmm. moment, right? Yeah. Um, and there's, you know, it's kind of like a, I'm sorry if I curse, <laughs> it's like kind of like a mindset. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah. You know, here's, I want to hear all about the tips that you would give somebody who is there. They're like, li like, they're like, Janet, Lachelle, I am doing all of the things that they're telling me to do and things are not happening. I don't know how much longer I can do this. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I would love for you to, to take our audience through that after this quick little break that I'm going to do, where I'm going to share something that exciting that I have coming up soon. So you guys stay tuned. Let me ask you this. Are you a business owner and you feel like you are literally tied to your phone all the time in order to keep up with social media? 
you know, you need to post consistently, but you don't know what to post and you don't want to have to post every single day because it means that you're married to your phone. So then you're not consistent and then business doesn't follow. Or maybe you have no idea how to attract your uh, ideal client and, and you want to find a way to, to get the right people to come to you. Oh my goodness. Like that was totally where I was. And I had to take some time and research to find out what the heck I could be doing to make my life so much better. So here's a scoop. I have found a system that I've created a system that has allowed me to not only attract my dream clients, but it's allowed me to be consistent by planning all of my content for an entire year in one single weekend. And I've decided to offer it to all of you guys. If that is something that you would love to learn more about, make sure to click on the link in the show notes so that you can learn how to get your life back, but keep your social media game on track. Okay. All right, Janet. So I just am dying to hear about what you would tell somebody who's feeling a little discouraged. They're like, I'm, I'm doing the things. Like I'm watching all the YouTube videos. I signed up with the coaching program. I'm doing the things that didn't work. Um, and I, I feel like I don't know how much longer I can do this. So, so what are some of the things that are sabotaging people and what steps could you give them to help them get unstuck? Okay. So right now I have a, uh, I have a workbook that I just created recently. It's the 12 reasons why you're not getting consistent clients, right? Ooh. And um, so here's the thing. Some of us, we download these amazing things that we put out there for free, right? Um, and there's two decisions that you have to make. You have to make either decisions to um, get that valuable information downloaded and um, do something with it or get that valuable information downloaded and then just move on to the next thing. And that's what's often what's happening in our online space is that we are um, getting all these valuable informations, we're hiring the coaches, we're, hired, we're getting into these paid programs um, mm -hmm. and we're still looking for that secret thing. We're still looking for that, um, you know, that thing that's gonna make us the, the most amount of money, right? yeah, the shortcut, <laughs> yeah, the, shortcut the, the, the thing that's going to blow our business up. That's yeah. what, that's the thing that I say. Yeah. Right. Um, and then you find yourself in the cycle of, um, just not fully implementing a strategy to its full potential mm -hmm. because you're still looking for that next thing. If you're asking yourself that, why is this not working? Why is this not um, getting me what I need, um, it's because you're fully, you're truly not implementing. You're still looking for that next best thing, right? And if you go into yourself, into your, and, and really be truthful with yourself and ask yourself, am I a hundred percent, um, all in into this strategy? Am I, am, is the state in my being a hundred percent confident that this is going to work? Right. Because what truly puts us in that state of um, I'm not getting the results is what's the next thing that I have to do? Right. 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 Being really honest with ourselves. Like, am I really, truly doing all the things that I said I could do and the program is telling me to do? Am I really doing that? And if not, like, what do I need to start doing that I haven't been doing? So, so Janet, how long do you tell people to, to try out a strategy where they were in their gut? They're like, Janet, 100%, I am doing everything that they want me to do. How long do you have that person stick with that strategy before they start to decide to pivot or shift? Okay. So there's two types of different pivots that we can do. We can do a pivot in our strategy, um, or we can do a pivot in our business and our business model, right? That's two types of different things that we can do. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. to really understand which one are you doing? Are you really changing just the model? Are you changing the model of your business from, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching to, um, you know, group coaching, or are you changing the strategy of, um, you know, I'm showing up in this platform um, this way, in this mm -hmm. form, 
um, doing these things consistently, right? Mm -hmm. So really, that's the first step, right? Really understanding what are you pivoting to and where are you shifting things? And then the second step is, um, how long have you been doing this, (laughs) right? Like truly a hundred percent consistently doing it yeah, and that you have been um, in integrity with your actions and been showing up with the confidence that you did. Because sometimes it's not the strategy, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. it's not um, you showing up consistently that's not working. Sometimes it's just um, other things, other factors, right? Um, and that comes to solving the right problem, right? So, that's so what story. other factors would that be? Tell me about that. Okay, so let's say you're probably speaking to your ideal There's um, probably you're speaking to your ideal client very vague, right? Mm-hmm. There, you're not being um, consistent with details around what they need to be hearing from you, right? Mm-hmm. And you're just out there putting facts because you're not aligned with your message. So messaging can be something that's not that can maybe cannot be working, and it's probably not that you're not that the strategy of you know of that you're using is not working. Yeah. It's just yeah. how does your message, right? So really yeah. identifying what those factors are um, is the second thing. You know, um, something that I have found, and I would love to get your expert opinion on this, that if I could tell you that I've been 100% consistent, like with integrity, doing all the things, I have historically found that I have to stick that out for a good 90 days, for a good three months, to determine whether or not it actually worked. Because what I have found in my own business is that what I'm doing right now is going to pay off in three to four months from now. And so if I give up too quickly, I might not have given the time for that strategy to actually come to fruition and to be able to harvest what I had planted a couple of months back. Do you find that that is consistently what you see as well? Or do you, would you adjust that? I actually see it more. I actually say um, I would actually stick to a, a strategy and, and a, um, um, be consistent in one form of you know, visibility plan for at least six months. That's, That's going to really give wise. you a hundred percent, you know, a report back of whether you should keep going or you should change yeah. your strategy. And do you find that with strategy changes, that little tiny, just tweaking something little is more effective than totally rebranding or re-strategizing everything? Like, what would your advice be for that? Oh, of course. A hundred percent. Okay. So one of the things that really holds me back in the first couple of years of my entrepreneurship was really getting stuck on the fonts and the colors of my website (laughs) and how it should look pretty. And and that was really the wrong thing to focus on. What I needed to just focus on was like, how was I going to attract my ideal clients? Right. Mm -hmm. How was I going to make a connection with those ideal clients, right? And how I was going to help them drive action to work with me, right? So that's, that's those are the three um, pillar things that I um, teach my clients mm-hmm. is how to attract your ideal client, how to connect with your ideal client, and how to um, drive them to take action to work with you, right? And if I knew this from the very beginning, oh my God, would it have helped me so much? (laughs) Yes, that would have been the secret ticket, right? So do you have any, without, you know, giving away all your secrets, because I want people to have the, the ability to work with you, what would you say would be kind of a top point in each of those three areas? Like finding the ideal client, connecting with them and like guiding them to work with you. What would you say would be an amazing just uh aha for people listening? your confidence and mm-hmm. your credibility. So those are the two things that I feel that if you don't have the confidence to um, show up mm-hmm. for those uh, for those six months, even when the clients are not coming in, if you don't have the confidence to keep saying your message over and over and over again, it's going to be hard for you to keep going. It's going to be hard for you to not stop and rechange the strategy over and over again, right? Yes. And that's yes. when it doesn't work for you because your 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 changing is so different in in yes. you know, so many instances that it's yes. like <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And then credibility is the other thing, right? Your clients need to understand and believe that you are an you're a credible expert at what you say you are a credible expert mm-hmm. at. 
and mm -hmm. you have to believe it first so your clients can believe it for you. Once you believe it, trust me, your clients believe it. Yes. Okay. So what if the person that's listening to this right now is saying, but I don't have the confidence. We so that's the secret sauce. Like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, we work on that. It's, it's different for everyone. Um, confidence come, um, the, the, the ability to have confidence is being able to do the things over and over and over again and really honing into that. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes, and that's why having a coach is so good and helpful because that coach can tell you um, and, and, and give you that feedback that you're not seeing yourself. Sometimes we're just stuck in our minds and yeah. stuck in, in ourselves. I don't, we don't really see what's the truth of everything. Right. Like right. I said, like you, you saw that when I was stuck at the very beginning, yeah. it would have really helped me if I had a coach at those um, very beginning that I had that session with her and she would have told me everything is all right. It's just a setback. Yeah. yeah. And I wouldn't have had months and months of, you know, feeling like a failure. Right. And th that's one thing, you know, I'm just going to say, I read something I think yesterday on one of my Facebook groups that talked about network marketing, for example. And I will say that that is definitely one of the things that is a value in that whole space is that there's always somebody in your ear cheering you on. And as an entrepreneur, solopreneur, cause I've done both is yeah. it's really lonely. And so, yeah. and it's, and it can easily get in your head. And so I think that just what you do for people is so important, Janet, because I've had it, I've had both and it's just, it's so powerful. And one of the things that I tell people when I coach them, and especially on my team, is that it's all about posture, which is exactly what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to fake it till we make it. And I hate that if that if that phrase isn't used properly, like it sounds disingenuine, right? But the reality is, is that we have to start showing up as the person, as the woman that we want to be. And like you said, it's confidence is not some magic pill. It's literally repeating the same thing over and over again and realizing that you're not going to die, realizing <laughs> that nobody's throwing, you know, digital tomatoes at you and trying to hook you off the stage. It's literally just showing up. And then you realize like, oh my gosh, like I didn't die. I still have friends. I'm going to try again tomorrow. And then the next day you do it again. And the next day you do it again. Um, that's how you're going to gain confidence. But if you never start, you're never going to get that far. But you can come out and truly like think, oh my gosh, like I'm I'm so nervous right now. But you show up and nobody knows. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna start to believe that that person exists within you. Yeah, and 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 here's the thing. You think that when you show up online, maybe on videos or you know, kind of like on podcasts and stuff, like yeah, the person on the other side that's listening, um, really does not care. It's hard to say, but it, they don't really care about you. They yeah. really care about the value that you're bringing, right? Yeah. So they, yeah. they really care about them and helping themselves so they can grow. So um, if you could stop thinking about yourself just a little yes. bit. Yes. It's good. Oh on. my gosh. And you know, <laughs> that, that brings back to essentially our entire conversation in the sense that you, if you just make it about serving other people and not about yourself, you're going to get further, far, farther, faster. And so when you think about, you know, when you said that when you first started, you were worried about the fonts and the color and the website, mm -hmm. like that was about you. Yeah. Right. That was totally. And, and then you went through that, that program that helped you to see that it's not just about the money, which is you. It's about mm -hmm. giving the value and impact to other people, them. Right. Yeah. And so the more that we can, remember that this isn't about us, we can start showing up. So when you are, you know, one of the things I'm going to guess, Janet, do you find that in order to build credibility and in order to build that, that view of confidence, video is probably something that's important. Would you say? Well, showing your face, yeah. whether it's a video, um, whether it's a picture, whether yeah. it's, you know, a form of, you know, a GIF, you yeah. know. Yep. In your face, it really creates a lot of trust, you know, trust and likability right. and confidence. And, and if you can show up on video, you guys, people can get to know, like, and trust you faster. But yeah. if you're preventing yourself from getting on video because you're afraid of going to, you're going to mess up just like I just did a second ago, right? I didn't say the right words in the right way, but 
the life goes on. We're still having a conversation and I'm not going to edit that out because I want people to hear it. And if you don't show up because you're afraid of saying the wrong thing or that nobody's going to be watching or that you don't know what you're talking about and you don't get yourself to show up, you're preventing the person who's been praying for you to have access to you. And you've now made it about you instead of about the one person who's out there praying for exactly what you have to offer. Yeah. And so I think that what a beautiful message to tie everything in to this is to, you know, to not, not to make it about you. I love that, Janet. Thank you. So is there anything else that you haven't had a chance to share in our conversation as we start to kind of tie everything together that you haven't had a chance um, yet? Yeah, I think I did. Uh, it's, you know, it's really, uh, it's a lot of that goes into it. It's not just one thing. It's a lot of things that go into yeah. entrepreneurship. Um, and once you know that and you get that and you accept that, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be more easy and flowy for, it's, it's going to, entrepreneurship has its flow. Once yeah. you accept that there's not that one secret thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, it's a process. It's a road. And you guys, like the thing that, that gets my heart, you know, going is I really do want people to, at the end of their life, say that I did what my potential was. I didn't play small. I didn't let fear get in my way. I didn't let, you know, risk aversion get in my way. I showed up to make the world better because I went for it. And Janet, that's what you did. That's what you showed us today. And again, it comes back to not, it's not about you. It's about how can you serve the world? How can you serve others? And so you guys, if you are thinking that entrepreneurship has been something that's been a little desire in your heart, but you've been too afraid and you just, you just don't know if you can do it. I want you to listen to Janet and I, and I, and I want us to encourage you that if you have a desire on your heart that's going to make someone else's life better, don't make it about you. Make it about the person, the potential, the impact that you are put on this earth to make. And when you do that, when you start trusting yourself, when you start trusting your higher power, your life can be better than you could have ever imagined as a byproduct of making everybody else's life better than they could have ever imagined. So. Um, Janet, before we hop off, I want to just remind everybody that all of the ways to contact Janet and follow her journey are going to be in the show notes so we can, we can make sure that we have a chance to work with you if we want to. And I ask my guests to give our audience one coaching question, one question that they can ponder that's going to help them get from where they are now to where they want to go. So what would you have people consider? This is amazing. Um, I do something that's called brunch dates with my business every um, week. And it's, I just go on a coffee date um, and I ask myself, you know, re self reflecting questions. And one of those questions is um, that first question is business, what do you want me to know? All right. Mm. And that you just sit down, close your eyes, and let that intuition and that guide you. Um, because often we just go, we, we are out there looking for that. We're looking for that thing, right? Like I said before, we're looking for that thing, yeah. but if we can just listen to our own selves, our own guidance, yeah. you're going to know, um, what's your next, best, next best step in business. And, and yeah, that's my question. <laughs> I love that so much. Okay, Janet, thank you so much. You guys have an amazing day and just keep being better, doing better and having better. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Untuck Podcast. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. And don't forget to check out the show notes if you want to get into my private club, The Better Club, to be able to learn better ways to be better, do better, and have better. So until next time, keep showing up. Let's get unstuck together. Have a great day.